On the night of July 16, 1918, the Russian monarchy would meet a brutal demise at Ipatiev House. Placed under house arrest in the Bolshevik Revolution, the fateful night would appear no different to the Romanovs being transported from site to site under armed guard. On this night, what had been announced as their next transportation was the arrival of an execution squad. This ice-cold slaying of monarchy in the name of revolution was not clear-cut, however. For decades after, mystery would remain. Did the children survive? If not, where were the supposed remains? And did the royal family have an imposter? Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we examine history's worst royal family tragedy. Woken at midnight, the Romanov family was told to dress themselves and get ready to be moved to the next safe location. Awaiting their transport, the royals were taken through to a basement room with two chairs. Within minutes, the transport had arrived, and to the shock of the Romanovs in the basement, secret police poured into the room. The very parties transporting him then declared that the Ural Executive Committee had decided they should be executed. Weapons were raised before the Tsar could even comprehend what was happening. His last words were only, what, what, before the entire basement was engulfed with gun smoke and its loud fire. Instantly, Tsar was slain with three gunshots to his upper body, and his wife and love, Alexandra, shot in the head. Disturbingly, the amount of gunfire even left the executioners unclear as to whether the job was done or not. As the entire room began to clear of its billowing gun smoke, murmurs and groans emanated throughout the room. The royal family children had survived. The three royal daughters had around 1.3 kilos of diamonds sewn into their clothing, essentially giving them crude, bulletproof clothing. For these children of the royal family, their diamond clothing didn't provide divine intervention. Their survival only led to them being bayoneted, and when that failed, shot in the head. It's understood approximately 70 bullets were fired at the Romanovs, and their chances of survival were nanoscopic. However, the diamond-coated royal children would begin a legend for the ages. Did the royal children survive the impossible? Though surviving a firing squad may not sound like a likely option for any person, there were some Romanovs in the basement a lot less likely to survive than others. The one and only son of Tsar Nicholas II, Alexei Nikolaevich, was just 13 years old on a fateful night at Ipatiev House. Alexei would be something of a highly protected individual on several fronts. He was the youngest child of the royal family. He was the only son of the royal family. And last but not least, he was a hemophiliac. The trait was carried down by his mother and both Alexandra and Tsar Nicholas II desperately tried to cure the boy of the condition through their faith healer Rasputin. Alexei would not live to see a day when he'd be cured of hemophilia. Despite the condition, he was somehow one of the worst possible sufferers in the execution. Much like his sisters, he would survive the initial onslaught. Accounts state that an entire clip of a Browning rifle was emptied into the young Alexei, who quite miserably survived this. Alexei would then be bayoneted for his troubles, which he would also survive. The crowned prince was finally put out of his misery with a gunshot to the head, his resilience even startling his executioners. There would be one survivor of this dark royal tragedy, one of the royal family dogs. A rather fluffy spaniel by the name of Joy was the crown Prince Alexei's beloved companion. Thanks to the prince's consequential hemophilia, playing with other children was not an option. His spaniel, Joy, would be his relief from an otherwise solitary childhood. Many photos of the Romanovs in their final years capture Alexei with Joy. The spaniel was even known by much of the Russian population thanks to this. In a miraculous turn of events, Joy would be spared the brutal murder of Ipatiev House. It should be said, Joy was not the only dog owned by the royal family and not the only dog in the house at the time of execution. When gunfire roared in the basement and the room became engulfed in smoke, the royal family dogs, quite understandably, began barking with all their might. There is evidence many of the loud barking dogs were dispatched with knives to cut out the noise. Joy was reportedly found by the executioners, the royal family's lone survivor, and taken in by one of them. 
Though completely blind, Joy would be cared for by Russian soldiers till a chance meeting with a British expeditionary. In a remarkable turn of fate, Joy would make it all the way to England, living out his last days at Windsor no less. King George V had promised the Romanovs safe haven in England. Who would have guessed the family dog would be the only one to make it? Though the worst royal tragedy had struck the Russian monarchy, that didn't stop royals from popping up out of the woodwork, left, right, and center. Amazingly, the constitutional vacuum left by the murder of the monarchy only attracted people coming forward, claiming to have survived the firing squads. Following the Soviet cover-up of the murders, the rumor mill was only bolstered by suspicions that the royal children had survived and escaped. So came the Alexei imposters, the Olga, Maria, and Tatiana imposters, and most notoriously, the Anastasia imposters. Of all false claims to Russian royalty and surviving a tragedy no less, Anna Anderson is without a doubt the most famous imposter. Born Franziska Shanskowska, her tale was something of a sad story, a troubled individual living off delusion and this delusion gaining public traction. Anderson was first institutionalized in Berlin after a suicide attempt at 24 years old. Only seven years later, a tabloid investigation would debunk the identity of Anna Anderson by discovering her birth name and the life of a Polish factory worker. Yet despite many calling it fraud, with so little evidence and so much mystery and cover-up surrounding the royal execution, Anna Anderson's claim of being Grand Duchess Anastasia stayed alive in the public imagination. Whether she was or wasn't became a matter of personal opinion to the average person. If Anna Anderson was a malicious sociopath or a troubled individual with a fractured sense of reality remains debate to this very day. The Soviets would only acknowledge the execution some six years afterward, and by that point, many individuals were claiming to be the surviving royal children. Alive and well in public perception was the belief that royal children had survived. This perception was more or less reality for over 50 years, till the discovery of the burial site in 1979. Again, this discovery was not made public for another 10 years. Approaching 80 years after the execution, the royal remains were given a state funeral and proper burial at the St. Petersburg Peter and Paul Cathedral in 1998. Even this was a cause of controversy, with the Royal Russian Orthodox Church questioning the legitimacy of the buried remains. This is a line they would stick to for some time. To the Russian Orthodox faith, the Romanov family were martyrs. As recently as 2015, the royal remains were exhumed at the insistence of the Russian Orthodox Church, which was once again proven to be the royal remains. It would take the arrival, and perhaps the technology, of the 21st century for the mystery of the missing children to be solved. In 2007, excavation and DNA analysis would reveal the remains of two Romanov children missing from the initial burial site. Nearly 100 years after their firing squad execution, the Romanov family were correctly buried and finally regarded as the victims of political repression that they were. Last but not least, the claims of surviving family were finally, rightfully, put to rest. History is a strange beast. Though Tsar Nicholas II has been remembered predominantly as a lacking ruler who couldn't handle the role, despite being well-meaning, the bloodshed brought upon the Romanovs remains a dark chapter of Russian history. Polling on the Russian public in 2018, a majority, reflects the sentiment that although Tsar Nicholas should have paid a price, this price was too high. Only 3% of those polled felt the family execution was justified. Revolution can be a wrecking ball, but the swing of a wrecking ball can damage more than intended. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.